Hi, this is Blessing Makosha Park and you're watching the Blessing at the Bar series brought to you in collaboration with lawcareers.net. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how you can use networking events to prepare for pupillage applications. So if you want to find out more, then keep watching this video. Blessing Makosha Park, this is the Blessing at the Bar series brought to you by lawcareers.net. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the lawcareers.net YouTube channel by clicking that red button below and make sure that you also head to www.blessingatthebar.com and sign up to the mailing list for the blog and find me online. It's at be at the bar on Twitter and Blessing at the Bar on Instagram. Make sure you give me a follow so you keep up to date with all of my content and I'll also be sharing sharing my lawcareers.net content so you can see that too. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you use networking events to prepare for pupillage applications. For the aspiring barrister, autumn and winter is around the time where the majority of the really important networking events such as the pupillage fair and chambers opening evenings are going to happen. Why? Because applications are due in January, February time. So this is really peak time that chambers are going to be trying to put their best foot forward and attracting you. But there are some things that you can do to make sure that you're getting the most out of all of this networking and that it's setting you in a good stead for pupillage applications. So the first thing that you can do to get the most out of networking is have a plan of action. Not every single chambers is going to be the chambers that you're going to target for your applications. It's much better if you've already thought out and mapped out the kinds of chambers you want to get access to and that you want to get to know more about because then when it comes to events, you know who to focus on. You can have a look at the program and maybe see who the speakers are so you know what questions to ask in their sessions or you can also use breakout networking events and you know that you definitely want to speak to these three people so it makes it easier because you know what you want to get out of it. That way every networking event is also a bit of a mission and that you go in seeking information and you come out with the information that you sought and if you do that then it really helps you with your applications because you're gathering relevant data. Think about it like this. There are hundreds of people applying for pupillage in a finite number of chambers. Strategicness is gonna be at the heart of how you're gonna secure your pupillage. So that also goes with strategic data gathering. You don't need to know everything about every chambers, but perhaps you need to know specific things about the ones you're targeting. You want to know their differences. You want to know what the one chambers does that another chambers may not do. These are all important things that you can pull out of targeted, focused networking. So if you haven't yet thought of which chambers you want and why, then do that before you go into networking. Otherwise, you're gonna be going to every event, you're gonna be inundated with information, and worst of all, you're not gonna have anything specific to say if a member of a particular chambers does engage with you. You're gonna be stuck asking the same run-of-the-mill questions, why do you wanna be a barrister? Or even worse, what areas of law does this chambers do? You need to know this information before you strike a conversation up. Know the information before you start a conversation. That's a nice little thing that you can remember. So the next thing you can do to make sure that your networking is helping your pupillage applications is by making a really, really good first impression upon people. Networking is fantastic because you can also find yourself in a situation where people are wanting to give you things like mini pupillages or shadowing opportunities and you are able to use that to further your knowledge of the chambers to develop meaningful relationships and to have a really strong idea about what your best qualities are for that chambers and what they're gonna value in you. This is a really important thing and you can do that um, now. It doesn't have to be something that you are worrying about later, you know, just before deadlines happen. Making a good first impression is something that you should do as early as possible because the bar is, again, it's a lot about character and personality. 
that's what people remember you for, that's what people look at you and think, yeah, I could definitely have this person as a member of my chambers. And you can get to know that by seeing how their personality rubs off on you. Don't forget that this is a two-way process. They also need to make a good first impression on you. And chambers that don't make a good first impression on you, don't put in any effort, don't welcome you, there's hopefully not that many, but unfortunately they are out there. So just because pupillage is hard, don't allow chambers to have this sort of blanket um, superiority. They also have to meet you with respect and so do their members. So if you do not feel like the members of a particular chambers are being particularly respectful towards you, um, are being um, open and kind, then they've made a bad impression on you. So this first impressions thing is important for everybody, but for you, try and focus on making a really good first impression and ensuring that your personality and your character are shining through. If you're struggling with that because you're nervous, remember that these are human beings you're dealing with. They're just like everybody else. They have gone through some specialist training and they work in a specialist career. But the cool thing about people who work in specialisms is that they're really, really, really nerdy about what they specialize in. So as long as you're having meaningful conversations about their work, trust me, they're gonna love talking to you about it. Another way that you can prepare for your pupillage applications through networking is by going in and asking questions. Now, asking questions is tied into the two previous points I've given you. But what I mean is, this is very rare that you're gonna have the opportunity to get very senior members of Chambers um, to answer questions for you. I always go into these conferences and talks ready with questions, I need them answered, and people are gonna be more likely to be candid when, it's, when they're asked a question in a setting where they came prepared to be candid and answer questions. So I had very specific questions I wanted to know from one very specific chambers about social media. As you guys all know, I'm very active online. I've got a personality and a presence online. People know me online. I wanted to make sure that that chambers was one where they wouldn't reject that about me and they wouldn't be funny about it. So I had a very specific question for the senior member of Chambers, it was the head of Chambers, and I asked him, what advice do you have for us using social media? Because I wanted to see what his response would be and whether that fit with my plans and what I already do. I wasn't interested in changing myself on the basis of his response well, unless I had to, but I wasn't interested in changing myself per se. I was more interested in understanding how he and his chambers approach social media. How do they look at people who are content creators? What are they gonna think of me when my application lands there? So that's something that I did. So asking targeted questions, you really rarely get this opportunity to ask questions like this. So make sure that you use it well, especially if you are worried that you're not gonna have an opportunity to network like that again, make sure you hit it on the head and get your questions out. Prepare them in advance. Please don't let me down and go networking asking the most basic questions that no one gets anything out of. As I've mentioned already, that's what areas of law does your chambers do? Things like that. We're gonna be more targeted. We're gonna be more strategic. We're going to make sure that when we're going into networking situations, we're asking targeted focused questions. Now the fourth and final tip I have is my favorite tip. I'm gonna keep stressing this tip over and over again. And I wrote a lawcareers.net blog post about it, which I will link in the bio. But that is to carry business cards. Business cards are so helpful for the aspiring barrister. It helps get your name out there. It helps get you remembered. It gives people a way to contact you again. And if you do what I did and you put your social media handles on there, you're giving someone an in-life invitation to follow you online and see you talk about what you love to talk about, 
be yourself, get a sense of your personality. And trust me, a lot of chambers are also online. Most chambers now wouldn't be caught dead without a Twitter profile. And some of them are also on Instagram. So by giving out your business card and allowing people a way to find you online, um, then that's a way for you to continue networking after the networking event. Why? Because people interact with you online. I get lots of lovely interactions from senior barristers. I get messages, I get tweets, I get likes. But what does that all amount to? That is networking. It's through a social media app, but it's still networking. These are people who I could go up to them in person and say, hey, I'm Blessing, you followed me online and I followed you back. Um, I liked your tweet a couple of months ago about your um, experience you had at this talk. I was actually at that talk. I, I thought you were great. Um, I was just wondering if you wanted to have a chat, something like that, because now you've used social media as your networking. And that is something that you can keep doing over and over again. So again, and I'm going to link to a lawcareers.net post I've done on this, which is about preparing for the BPTC, but there's a very relevant part about social media there, which is tidy up your profiles, make them good. I'm a bit of a personality online, so you may not necessarily do it exactly how I do it, but as long as your social media is looking clean, it's looking professional, it's looking like something you're proud of, it's something that you would want a Chambers or members of a Chambers to follow, and that you feel like people are going to get to know you, then you're doing well. So focus on that part of it, and make sure that your social media is good to go. I talk about the grandma test in my lawcareers.net post, so have a look at that and make sure your social media passes the grandma test. Okay guys, so that's the end of the video. Once again, I'm gonna ask that you click that red button below and subscribe to lawcareers.net and make sure that you head to blessingatthebar.com and follow me online. It's B at the bar on Twitter and Blessing at the Bar on Instagram. I love to hear your guys' comments about the videos and your suggestions on what else you would like me to do. So I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care of yourself and good luck with all of your networking. Peace out.